And we are live. Eric, how are you doing today, man? Good to see you on here. I appreciate it. Episode two of the podcast. Um, great having you. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I appreciate it. You've done, you did what, the Bathurst 12 hour yesterday. Yeah, we, they, we try to tackle the mountain. Daytona 24 IRL. Yep. And a bunch of other crazy stuff you upload on... Uh, you stream on Twitch, you upload videos on YouTube. Yep. Any other platforms? Not streaming or video. I'm on Twitter and Instagram, finally. I had to keep up with the kids, and I made an Instagram before I went up to Daytona. <laughs> well, that's awesome. It's good to, good to keep people updated. But yeah, great, for have, uh, great to have you on here. Um, I guess we'll get started. Bathurst was the most recent thing yesterday. Yes. Um, you raced with, uh, you were a special guest, well, at the time. But I think now uh, you, you can explain it, but just walk us through Bathurst, how, how that all happened, how you got together with some guys and it was, tackled it was them out. R- really weird. Uh, briefly left my team, TDR, right after the Daytona 24 on iRacing. Great go- group of guys. I still really like them, but uh, I ended up posting in my lunch chat that I was looking for people to run with. Someone reached out and it ten- at, uh, was Overton Speed Shop. Ended up running Bathurst with them yesterday. Had an amazing time. Ended up finishing sixth. I think like 19th split we found out. But it was a blast. <laughs> and then they invited me onto their team as of last night. So You're like full time now. Fr- yeah. Well, yeah. That's awesome. They're doing some mobile stuff too. I'm really excited for that. I didn't know that at the time. But I'm going to be running the 500 of one of their sets Wednesday night. That's awesome. Good stuff. So yeah, Bathurst you took, of course. Uh, which car did you take? To no surprise, the AMG GT3. <laughs> if there was even a choice, if there was even a, cho- would you have? Would you have ran uh, the Bathurst if, if, say, someone reached out to you? Would it would have to be Mercedes? No, I would have run it in the Ferrari. Uh, okay. It's one of those no to Audi. I know they're really fast, but I'm not nearly talented enough to try to drive the Audi around there just because of how twitchy that thing is. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I don't think I'd have the talent to do that. Uh, and I always hit the BMW. Same. I think I got uh, my first road win in one, but I don't enjoy it. That was back when it was a BMW McLaren and roof where you're only uh, GT3 options. Boy, that, that was, was a while ago. Was, yeah, that was 2014. Jeez. I think. Yeah, that was a long time ago. When did you start iRacing? I just hit six years in December. Jeez, yeah. you've been on this service a while. Hearing all these people talk about when they started iRacing, which is like five, six years ago, and I've only been on iRacing since I think November of 2018. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. You've seen a lot of changes on the service. Yeah, I, I have. bet. It was actually weird hearing Malone talk about some of the names, and I even posted in the uh, chat before, like wheel damage. Like, man, that was one of the first guys I watched on YouTube. Besides, like, the normal records, Kevin, uh, Empty Box. Uh-huh. Like, my first... I was watching his VODs. I didn't even know he twi- uh, streamed on Twitch for a while. I yeah. didn't know what Twitch was. So I was watching Wheel Damage on YouTube do the old IMSA series. Like, he used to run the uh, Riley DP. Oh, my gosh, And the old man. multi-class. So when Malone brought that up, it hit me. Like, damn, I remember that. Yeah, it makes you feel old in the iRacing scene, knowing all it these... Does. uh all these stupid kids that are so fast. <laughs> yeah, you boomer over here talking about uh, you know, all this this stuff. No, yeah, but back in my day. Back in my day, exactly. When you when what was IMSA back then? Because it was you said Riley. There weren't. Were there oh, any God, GTEs? Like no, no GTE didn't happen till the year I went to Watkins Glen. That was twenty sixteen. No, twenty seventeen. They, really? have, they dropped them right in the middle of the summer, like around uh, Shalen six hours of the, of the Glen, twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen passed. Uh, yeah. So wow. it was just GT threes. So it was literally just the Riley, the Rough, McLaren, uh, and BMW. I think someone's gonna have to look it up for me because I think, and it took me a while before someone mentioned the name, but I think it was called the American Le Mans series. Really? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't even IMSA. Yeah, yeah. And even then, I wasn't that interested in road stuff off the bat. It took me a long time on the service before I even started touching road. Were you always an oval the, guy? 
for the most part, yeah. Um, gotcha. Actually, iRacing's first Daytona 24 is when I really, that was the first time I drove a GT3 with the McLaren. Really? I bought my first GT3 car to run iRacing's first 24 hours, the first year they did it. And that was the, that was the McLaren that you, that yep, you bought? We, we won like 13th split in the McLaren. Really? First one, mm-hmm. first, first 24 yep. you did and, and you won it. Yep. Was the McLaren the same? I assume the handling was pretty much identical to today. I don't know. I wasn't. I wasn't near fast enough to get the thing to break loose. Probably. I don't know how we won it. <laughs> that is crazy. I was, I was bad. I, I remember learning how to drive GT3 cars, learning Daytona Road. This 24-hour race that sounded really cool. Yeah, of course. And that was the very first 24 that iRacing hosted. Yep. Was that yep. the first endurance that iRacing had? Like just in general on the yeah. roadside? Uh, probably one of the. No, people probably threw posted up. But I think that was that was our first attempt at 24. Okay. I couldn't tell you if they tried 12 hours beforehand or not. Maybe like the six hours of like Watkins Glen they maybe had. Or... They, they, they may have done something like that. I don't know. But you definitely. I didn't pay much attention to road until that point. Yeah. I assume though the, 20, the Daytona 24 though was the first 24 though. Yes. That yes, iRacing had. First, it was the first attempt at it. And wow. it went from what I remember pretty well. Really? Very well That's a surprise. A show, but I, <laughs> I remember it not crashing all the time really yeah no i remember last year i it wasn't so last year i was very fortunate because um the 24 in 2019 that i did we did the nights uh night start the one that started at like 7 or 8 p.m our time Mm -hmm. and it was fine nothing was wrong but apparently the the morning one that's like 8 a.m our time or whatever really hard yeah that was when I think people were flashing all like people were blinking all everything mm-hmm. was stuttering. I, re- I and, think I remember that. Yeah, and I just remember the broadcast like the they didn't the commentators didn't know what to even commentate on cuz everything was just I mean it was just like yeah, a little, yeah, little everything little. was blinking like they don't know what's going on. Yeah, you can't keep track of or stuff the timings and stuff. Really say. Yeah, and I mean it's kind of awkward especially as like that's what I've always wondered, you know, commentators and stuff whenever you know, they they always commentate to try and make it of course as like realistic and professional as possible like real life. But I think it definitely takes some skill to be able to see something that is not, not realistic at all, a.k.a. a blinking car, insane net code, like rubber banding, and yet yeah. just kind of blow no, it I, off, you know? So I'm gonna ignore it. I, I think there's a, a fine line between ignoring it and just, it, it's a part of the game. It's something that's going to happen. Yeah. There's a way you could probably put it professionally to kind of like acknowledge, hey, this is going on. But the fact that this year is 24, I was surprised when this was the biggest year ever. It went really well. It, well yeah, except for people get, trying to get in. That initial load up. Oh, yeah. Really happen every time. That, that scared me. That, yeah, now the Bathurst, there was issues. There was people really? dropping out. Oh, yeah. I, well, uh, this I year? Issues. Really? I didn't even... Some people had uh, connection issues. Blinking really? and uh, Well, my sim <laughs> uh, crashed while I was in the car. Interesting. We probably we uh probably lost the lead, lost the win because going into turn one, my sim closed. Wait, yeah. What car. happened? What during Bathurst twelve hour? Walk us through kind of like a timeline of like the start of the race, any events that happened in the beginning, middle, end, like just cool stuff in the middle. Yeah. Uh, again, starting out new team. Uh, first one in the car was Scott, who killed it. Like, well, I think we were in the lead. Well, we started on pole. And I think we led all of the first two hours and had a minute, minute and a half lead. Uh, had the team owner Lee in the car, ran a solid stint, kept us out in the lead. I jumped in the car for two hours. And uh, I think we were, I think we led still through that whole stint. And it wasn't until the middle of the race we had a, uh, bit of an incident where we clipped the wall had three minutes worth of damage decided to fix it all drop back to second and uh we spent the last i think four or four and a half hours trying to race our way back up and in the process of doing that my last stint we uh well not we i had a connection issue like 16 seconds from chase down from i think 30 in an hour on the leader Going into turn one with about three laps left on my fuel tank, my sim just closes. Oh, no error, my. nothing. It just just, de- just deletes closes. off. It just boop, gone. Luckily, we towed, lost more time. 
leader had issues came from about three minutes back. Uh, and our last fuel stint, we decided not to take tires because we had to do something. We're still 50 seconds back with an hour left. Uh, and got to within a couple seconds, but trying to double stint tires on Bathurst is a bad time. Especially and, at uh, the time of day that that had to have been. Yep. I mean, that was peak yep. afternoon heat. So it actually started cooling back down. Really? Okay. See, I, I wouldn't back know. Down to I, about a hundred degrees. And, uh, but yeah, we ended up having an issue and, uh, we crashed and finished sixth, but still first big team race as a team. I think we got seventh overnight on team one. And then the team I was on, we got sixth. Okay. So well, that's awesome. Especially for your first time on, on this team or whatever. And now that you're there, like committed now to that team, that's awesome. Great first result. Yeah. I, and I didn't crash the car. I you, didn't crash the car. I almost did. The, I'm if sure you that go, you probably had pressure. <laughs> Yeah, there was. I've, I was nervous my first stint, and then I got calmed down. Which, if you guys are on my Twitter, or maybe I'll link it later, I had a issue. I had almost an issue. I about killed the car. Oh, the I mountain. remember I had, that. I one. had a stopped Audi right in front of me, and I snuck behind them. They were making fun of me because I slowed down like four mile an hour. There's a stopped car in the middle of the road, and apparently I never slowed down. I just gunned it and <laughs> almost killed the car. But it's it's. I would it, definitely it's recommend Twitter, watching or it's it. All my clips. Yeah, definitely uh, check out that clip because that was insane. The way you yeah, cut, and they're all they're all laughing at me. I'm like, I'm that was stupid of me. I mean, I thought, I, it, was I funny, thought it, was... But it was also incredibly stupid. I could have easily killed the car and meatballed it. That's, oh, da- that's, 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 that's definitely you could have easily, especially like if you because the way you went, you went on the left into the grass. Oh yeah, the little grass stupid. that is there. And if you were to have like gone too quick and then understeered to that big curb. Mm-hmm. You would have just flown over into the oh, wall. Yeah. It was, it was, there were so many things could have went wrong, and it didn't. I think someone's sending it in eye racing, but the problem is, is I had to make a split second decision. Uh, that he, I saw him rolling back on track, so I had to cut left and just hope, because I figured he's going to keep rolling out in front of me. Yeah, no, that like was in, in real time. It was so a split difficult. second, but looking back, I'm just stupid. I never touched a brake. I like halfway lifted and just went. <laughs> Well, that's like one of those things is, is in moments like those, you, you can't really teach yourself how to, it, it, it's all instinct at that point. You oh know? yeah. You can't that was like, no inst- Yeah, that was, I'm not going to say instinct because I survived, but that was just a stupid decision that went well. <laughs> you got lucky with that. No, I that's did. great. I though. got extremely lucky. I'm not even going to try to act like that was skill. Well, I mean, it, it you knew, I mean, you went for a gap and you, you took I it. I thought I was dead and I survived. It wasn't one of those. I'm making this. I thought I'm. Dead I had to pinch yourself, like going down yeah. the mountain afterwards. You're like, did that, like, why, is this, are we oh, still yeah. alive? We were like, dying down the mountain. Oh like, yeah, like everyone was like, "What? Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my!" Yeah, like, it was. It was just insane. Well, I'm yeah, glad I, that that happened because I would have definitely. I, I'm sucked. glad I didn't kill it either because trust me, I probably wasn't getting a team invite after doing that. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, it wasn't Surviving your fault. Though. That, like, hey, this guy, he's gonna do something stupid if it works out. <laughs> I, I mean, I that yeah, that was crazy. And I mean, you finished like just. I think that yeah, that we in itself. Six. We should we realistically, if we would have just backed down and not been chasing leader, who pulled away from us? He had fresh tires. We could have got second, but still a top six at ba- in my first Bathurst. I've never tried that before. Mm-hmm. Really, never done Bathurst, and nope, never the, tried. How, how I've always been scared of the mountain. Same, actually. This was my first year as well, but we we ended up dying. Um, but. That's beyond the point. Do you know when Bathurst was added to Irie? Like, not the track, but the the actual event. Was that? Is it been around for a while? I think it's been around for a bit. Okay. It's I feel like Irie's special events really. Someone's gonna correct me. Cause someone's like an OG guy here, but I feel like somewhere around the same Daytona twenty four and one, they they started doing a lot more of these. Okay. And I could be wrong. Bathurst may be an old event. I don't know, but. Yeah, but it was, you definitely don't know that when, like, it wasn't just Daytona that they added. It was like, we're yeah. going to do yeah, like a spa, calendar. Yeah, Spa yeah, 24. It, it that same year, they did Spa 24, spa 24. and Petit Le Mans. Did they do 24 Le Mans? Other stuff. Surely, they, did they not have? Yeah, the first year they did Le Mans. Okay, cool. It's not, it's something major happened. There was a big connection issue or something in top split. <laughs> I forget what happened, but it, it was a yeah. bit of a mess. I think iRacing, I... It just seems like something every single year happens during special events. 
oh, every yeah. time. You, you, you can plan for it. It's something's going to happen. It's just a matter of what. Yeah, what and if it's going to be in the beginning and of the when. race, the middle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What and when. when. And I don't really know. Surely it has to come down to the the servers or something. I don't know. Just having so many people, maybe the yeah. servers are just over. Who knows? It's it's so hard to connect so many people, to so many different places at once. It's yeah. I it's hope a they lot. fix it soon because it's a lot of people. Like I took vacation for Daytona. Yeah, yeah. That's. I hope they do as well because, like, the thing is, is the service is just continuing to grow. You yeah. know, like what if it gets to a point where I know this is crazy to think about, but say iRacing gets so popular that you're say doing IMSA, your IMSA series or VRS series, get as many people as like these 24 hour events do. Imagine like 2000 people signing up to like IMSA, right? Like, let's just say in a crazy future when, when if iRacing ever blows up, I don't think that that's that unrealistic to say what that is coming up to Daytona. I think the 500, I think there's going to be a lot of people signing up for. Hopefully it's Some fine. Some splits, I think we're probably going to have close to 1,000. Really? For the well, 500? NIS usually gets a couple hundred, but seeing as it's, oh, it's the 500. Speedways, you get all these people. Yeah, typically, I think Daytona and Talladega, those are, that, those are the ones that I typically will always run. Yeah. Because I just, I don't know what it is. Super Speedways, is, it's kind of yeah, easy as well. It's it, easy, but also with a lot of strategy Definitely. there is a lot that goes into it and especially open oh wise, yeah that it's yeah i feel like oval is more especially on the like super speedways it's less about pace because you, you, it's less about like driving skill in the sense of you don't need to learn the track really you don't need to have pace because you're with everyone else but it's more of what you were saying the strategy the minds it's like oh, the yeah. mental it's, game it's, that it's wins more, it's you know, the most strategic over race you can do definitely 100 percent. i i 100 percent agree i always somehow manage to screw it up and it, people get so advanced with you know like i don't know how these people know like oh if there's a caution on lap 20 like people are like oh no don't put it or sometimes they're like oh yes pit now it's like i, I don't know like some people are it, so confident yeah. so confident some of it's tire wear some of it's fuel stuff like it's it's weird there's a lot of strategy that goes into it it's probably uh, yeah. of people it's it's more advanced than you may think no i i really like it and especially the pack racing and stuff is just mm -hmm. really intense oh, i mean intense. white knuckle like you're yes. you're not get, you get some white knuckle stuff on road and i tried doing that for four or five laps oh it's like it, it's crazy it, it is so like you can't even you have to literally focus 100% on the race mm -hmm. on the, the the race you can't even like look at chat you can't do anything you're just and it, you'd think it'd be so easy you're just driving in circles but especially when you're pack racing i mean it just is so oh yeah you you're made, inches away from every single car a, a second mind lapse and you have 20 cars that are killed and it's all your fault Oh, and yeah, they're all looking at the pressure. replay, looking at you, saying, and then yeah, they just get on just exactly, everyone. yeah, and then that's yeah, they'll come on the mic, just absolutely grill you to death, and oh yeah, you're you're, you're done, yeah, and they'll watch out for you the next race, like it's one of those you can easily make enemies. <laughs> that's one of those things about Oval is, I, I mean, I feel like on road, I feel like I racing in general, of course, everyone knows everyone, but something about Oval, I mean, that once you get those top split Oval races, you're racing against the same people every night, and you you start to form. You're like, yeah, you're racing door to door with someone. It's not like road. Well, okay, yeah, road does have it at times where you're battling with someone all race. Let's be honest, a lot of the time road is more of a spread out based on pure it's like pace. pace. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's like hot lapping basically over mm -hmm. the course of an hour or something. But yeah, it's crazy. Just the amount of, I mean, yeah, rivalries and stuff, or it's just so much that goes into, or just so. I don't know the the community itself. It, it is honestly quite intimidating to me to to know if you're racing against like a peak driver or something. I mean, they they won't forget it if you take them out. They'll they'll hold you to it for the oh yeah for the grave. You know what I mean? I mean that's like some crazy crazy stuff. And the chances, of course, as well of just crashes are higher. I feel in terms of like you know you, you, since you're always so close to everybody, the chances of crashes don't like. The thing with the road is I feel like the probability of crashes are really high at the beginning and then it just dwindles down. If someone spins out, yeah, no one someone, cares. Yeah, it's usually a self-spin, self-cleaning yeah, type. You can avoid it. 
Exactly. Oh, well, you're uh, you're a lot more likely to get caught up in someone else's incident. Yeah, hundred percent. And throughout the whole race, you're never safe. You know, even lap one ninety nine of the Daytona five hundred, and they can be a crash that just screws you over. You know, it's just it's or, crazy. Or a lap car that pushes someone else to the win. Oh, <laughs> it it's it's insane. Yeah, I think I think oval in general. I know today actually they have the um, was it the Bush race IRL Bush class the, yeah the Bush clash it came back uh well the name came back this year from old school it's going on I think right now really right now well yep. right now curious to see I guess what what happens there and then yesterday they had the Arca race did you see that I was no I was racing I heard about it I completely forgot about it oh that's right yeah Bath in my group chat uh mentioned it I know Haley Deegan got uh second I think yeah and I heard she wrecked someone yeah <laughs> Yeah, I saw the That's replay. That's what I heard about is Haley Deegan wrecking someone. I think it was. I watched the replay back. I, I mean, I'm not trying to white knight Haley, but I think it was. She's I, a rookie. I, it's one of those. This is her first super speedway race. Yeah, she's gonna get burned for it. Yeah. In, in the end, she's also that's her first time ever doing something like this. Yeah, and from the replay, what I saw it was like she was in third, and the guy, like almost. From the angles I saw, he like moved into her, and then it, she spun him. Yeah. So like, I mean, and I think he I, I may have know. been trying to move up a lane or something, and you just aren't clear. Yeah, just he was. But I think the, the that's on the back stretch, bad. The spotters are on the other side of the track in the oval. You're, you're not going to be able to see absolutely perfectly if there's room every millisecond. I never think about that, but like in i racing, if you're spotting in i racing, you have it so easy because you just mm -hmm. literally ride chase cam and are right there the whole time. But yeah, in real life, I guess for some reason it never occurred to me that, I mean, those guys have to be spotting from somewhere. They can't just be magically floating above the car the whole race. Yeah, and, they're uh, they're always up on top of the stands. They always have like the highest part of the track where they can look over. With their is it like literally the are they basically on like the roof of that? Yeah. Okay. Like Daytona, they, I think they're somewhere up in there or above yeah. the uh, level four stands. Yeah, because I know it says like there's that big kind of like white building on top that says like yep. the home of World Center, or, yeah, World Center, World Center of racing. racing. Yeah, I should know. I took a picture of it. <laughs> well, I think it. Yeah, actually, speaking of Daytona, yeah, you were there for the 24. I was. Uh, I was at walk the 24. Us through that. I saw some yeah. of it through your vlogs, which was really yeah. awesome. Uh, for your first time I'm glad, doing a I'm vlog, glad I, people liked those. I've those never they were awesome. Like they were truly, uh, truly, really awesome. It, I was, I've always been painfully shy for stuff like that. Uh -huh. Like actually filming it for real life stuff. And I finally got myself to do it when I bought this camera. And I'm glad I did it. Uh, but yeah, third year going down to Daytona 24, which if anyone is thinking about doing it, do it. It is an amazing event. You can get up close and personal in IMSA, walk through the garage. I mean, hell, because of Malone, I got to hang out with Nicky Tim as he found out his car got crashed. It really, you were with him like the mo kind of around the time. Yeah. That, well, really? I'm sure you heard Malone told the story. Yeah. From last week. Yeah, I was, I was hanging out with him. You too. were right there in the pits with him and stuff. When it wasn't the pits, it was actually well, kind of in the garage area by back by his trailer. Okay, it was in the infield. But, yeah, it was in the infield, but the hit their team garage was across from it. But yeah, I would, yeah, I was there with them when Checkers had to uh, tell them. Oh my goodness me! But it's an amazing event. That is I awesome. I mean, IMSA puts on a show. It's not too crowded. Yeah, I mean, like Matt said, we you can kind of sit wherever you want. Were there it's assigned awesome. seating? What like on your nope. ticket? Really? Nope. So you could just sit anywhere. It's general mission. Okay. Yeah, I could stand in the infield or I could go over to the stands, sit wherever I wanted. Really? And the views, I assume. I, yeah, oh, we're, we're awesome. talking about that with Matt. Like, not many people go to these, sadly. And so. Yeah, it's. You eh, can just go everywhere. IMSA is not one of the biggest racing series. It's not NASCAR. And even then, NASCAR, right? Like, attendance is dropping, let's be honest. Uh huh. But that also makes it awesome, is there's not a billion people. I like that. You a pay lot. for it was like 185 bucks for infield access for four days. That's an it's amazing. Like such deal. a steal, dude. That is yeah. insane. There's not a billion people. It's awesome. Yeah, I. As as if if you're thinking about it, do it. Just you'll thank me later. And I honestly think this is going to start turning into a bigger and bigger event every year for some like the streamers and stuff coming down. 
Oh, I definitely I, next I year think, I'm gonna go 100. percent I think. Oh, I we have hotels booked already. Really? Yeah, we finally got our hotels booked. So you're guaranteed. You're 100. percent Yeah, we're going. Wow. I might. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I, I'll. Start I definitely looking want to go hotels because they're gonna start getting scalped. Really? Yeah, I, I want to yeah. make sure. Or I might but, just get Airbnb. I might stay awesome in the ten event. man Airbnb or whatever. Yeah. That. <laughs> There's stuff to do around the track, but even then, it's just. Daytona is something I think everyone should experience once. Definitely. Even not for the 500, the 24 hours is just awesome. It's such a laid back event. Yeah. It's fun. And is there always, because I, I, throughout the whole race, does it ever get, like, not, I don't want to say boring, but is there always stuff to do, kind of? Yeah, there's stuff to do in the infield and whatnot. There's a bunch of booths, uh, even t-shirt vendors there's a guy there's a really cool die cast guy i can't remember the name of his uh shop but we go there every year and uh my friend bought a piece of a porsche bumper there from like the mid 2000s oh yeah like i saw that in the blog yeah. yeah 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 that was like within us being at the track for an hour he bought a porsche bumper and we had to try to stuff it in the back, <laughs> stuff of, it in the back of your car no that was yeah. sick and wasn't it it was just like half of it right or did you have the other yeah it was half of it you, you had the, the other, other half, half. So okay. I was trying to get my friend to buy the other half. So they had like two matching bumpers. That would be so be like awesome. Sort of Welded together. Or so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was like, they each had the other half of the bumper, but I couldn't convince Aaron to do it. I'm oh, like, I think that would have been he, sick. He bought enough other stuff, but, uh, that's like that thing when two friends, like they like cut their hand and do like a blood, like oath. Yeah. That Except was a the, really great idea. <laughs> Except back in the day, bumper. it sounded great. Now it's like, Oh yeah, that was really stupid. Yeah, that's really stupid. That's how you get like yeah, the uh, same concept only with Porsche bumpers. Exactly. Yeah, just have a, have a friendship that'll last forever just based off of a Porsche bumper that you like. And the thing is, is I'm going down with friends, but they're people I met on iRacing. Yeah, it's that's not people so cool. I knew in real life. It's me and a guy I met off iRacing off of uh, just joining a team years ago. Yeah, who happened to live a few hours from me. We drive down twelve hours together every year. Meet up another guy we know off our team. So cool. And actually, I think we're all getting together for uh, the Indy GP. Okay. Not the 500, but the road course race. There was someone that, was it you? Yeah. Was it you who told Probably. me? Yeah, because Scott McLaughlin is making his... Uh, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Which, back in the day, fun fact, Keystone Motorsport, Scott McLaughlin raced with us some. Like, I have videos up on my old channel. Really? He raced McLaughlin. with you guys? Yeah, he threw up... That is so a video awesome, I, man. There's a video I did, and I just recently... Don't mean to plug. Oh, I used to Go do YouTube it. way back in the day, like years ago. I had an old channel, Egg TV. There's a video called Skippy Death Montage. We raced Skippies around Monza, and it was a stupid time, but it was most of the team. Scott McLaughlin was in that session. He threw up the session for us to piss around in. And this was before he went to Penske and became two time V8 Supercar champion. But with him making his indie debut, he's like, Yeah, we're going. So yeah. there's going to be, a, I think, a bigger group of us going to the Indy GP of all of us on a former iRacing team to meet up with someone who was on our iRacing team that a V8 supercar driver now could be IndyCar driver. Dude, that is so cool. Are it's you still in contact weird. with him? Or no, is it... I haven't talked to him in a couple of years. Wow. But it's, that is crazy. It's so cool. That is so cool. Just stuff it's like that. It's weird that, that you pixel know? racing <laughs> can do so many... Di I never thought I'd get a Daytona or the 24. Pixel racing has changed my life for the positive in so many ways it's really weird yeah i, I think i it's just so cool just communities in general because it's like when, when everyone starts i racing for the most part they don't know anyone for, for the most part yeah. you start up you know nobody and then fast forward in your case six years or whatever since you started yeah. and you're going to the daytona 24 you're going to the indy gp with people that you've met all through yeah, the online. same yeah all, all through online racing. all through <laughs> pixel racing <laughs> exactly that is so cool that that sort of stuff uh can happen i think i was gonna meet uh jess baroni actually because he's up in austin and i'm in san antonio i was gonna meet yeah. him for the uh WEC race there's a WEC race at coda and i don't know if he's going anymore but we were gonna hang out there but yeah it's just really cool like i didn't get to talk to him much people. at daytona he was really in on the race yeah i saw i said hi and whatnot but wasn't, he was super focused on the. Oh on yeah, the he was. He was there. Yeah, Matt was saying that Jesper was just like how he is on stream, like just the same person. So is Matt though. Really? That's what really took me. Like that's his cool. That's really of humor, cool. Everything that is 
you get mad on stream. No I matter what, really like off stream oh, yeah. and on stream, same guy. That's so cool. Like, he is a really truly phenomenal now. person. And all those guys that were down there. Yeah. I met some people I've, I've talked to in chat or knew their name. DuckTales. DuckTales. Really nice guy. I, I can put a face to it. It's like, hey, we hung out together. That is so cool. Just, yeah, putting, putting, yeah, just, I don't know. I think that that's awesome. And all hanging around doing something that, or watching something, I guess, in this case, that everyone's passionate about is just so cool, especially in America where, you know, motorsports really aren't, I mean, it's not football or anything. I mean, it's yeah. not that popular. And so it's just cool to be able to find people who do like it and then, you know, go to these events and stuff. That's so cool. And so the NDGP, that's when again, May? I think it's like May 4th and 5th or something May 4th that and weekend. 5th. I really want to go to an Indy 500. Uh, sometime I do in the too. Like, that's one of my bucket list things. But like yeah. when this popped up, like, you know what? Maybe I'll go to Indy, meet again, Mr. Hattie Plays, another pixel racer. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, that's we're awesome. meeting up with him down there because he lives uh, a few hours away from us. That's awesome. I think. Um... I really want to go to the Sim convention. I forget what it's like, the actual uh, name. Sim Expo. Sim Expo in Germany. Um, I'd love to go to that sometime. So for I feel sure. like that would be awesome. If yeah. It just wasn't a, we used to have, what, iRace for Life? There was one, was, I don't know, it was way before There was one time. in Texas. I think it was iRace for Life because the late David Cater, uh, who unfortunately passed away, was one of the main people on there. Because I remember him doing a setup video with Ray Afala. And oh yeah, on YouTube. I saw that on like, YouTube. That was, yep, that yep, was yep, from yep. the I Race for Life thing, which was kind of, I think, our version of it. I don't know. Well, that would have been Somebody cool. They need to, to start that up. They need to have that in America as well. They need to have just kind of like they have TwitchCon with, uh, you know, yeah. TwitchCon EU, TwitchCon NA. They need to do that because there's a lot of us. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of content creators like uh, drivers. Just in general, I mean, I, I know why it's in EU. I think it kind of does oh, yeah. make more sense to be in EU. There's but... a lot of huge sim racing companies that are all EU. Oh, yeah. I think there's more EU than American. Definitely, I think so. Fa is Fanatec? Uh, Germany. Germany? Mm -hmm. I was in felt that's also, I think, Germany, right? Yeah, something like that. Some <laughs> it sounds English German, country. I think. And then, yeah, Logitech, I guess, is... is sim Labs, EU. Sim Labs, yep. Um... Uh, Thru I think like Thrustmaster, that's American, right? That maybe. I think that Thrust sounds American. It sounds American. Logitech, that's American, I think. Yeah. And of course, those are all the ones that have like the cheaper wheels. Yeah. And then <laughs> the stuff that makes the high quality. Uh, JCL, I think that may be an American. I could be wrong. I don't know, but, but I think they're more of a retailer. Yeah, I, I mean, it makes more sense though, especially like you were saying, like with all these companies based in Europe, like. If they want to yeah. show off their new products or to show off products, of course, they're probably going to do it in Europe, where a lot of their products are meant for road racers as well. Like, direct drive wheels or, like, like hydraulic pedals. I mean, do, does, do oval drivers really need that stuff, do you think? Yeah. Wheel can be helpful. Mm -hmm. But some of that's just because of some open setups. Like, you're on the brink of being over the edge. You usually start off with something that's really loose and the car comes in after a few laps. So having something that you can feel the car starting to step out a bit. Can like be really helpful. quick, yeah. And pedals somewhat just smooth a throttle application. Yeah. That and makes more sense. Precise throttle. It's always but always better and the stuff. The brake itself is more for road. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I just feel like and most of the road community, at least definitely in iRacing, is European by far. Like, yeah, I mean, I'd say a decent... Well, think of how many road series there are just non-American. Yeah, there's... between Most like, of them are, for the most part. I mean, some of them... I mean, IMSA's American. IMSA's American, but you got stuff like WEC, uh, Super Trave... Oh, Super Trave, I, I guess I do have an American. But there's so many different road series. BTCC, uh, what's Japan's? Uh, Super GT. Yeah. And then Germany had the, uh, 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 their own. It wasn't GT3, but it had like the German cars that I think Mercedes just pulled out of. I know there's uh, VLN and iRacing, which is, but yeah. DTM. Yeah, oh, yeah, DTM. yeah, DTM. DTM. Yep, 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 yep. 
And there, I'm I'm just scratching the surface. There's probably like a thousand more. Yeah, there's so they have many so many more variants. Yeah, but we have like th- that's because it calls for it. Like, yeah, that their demand. I mean, their road racing is like our NASCAR, and even then, our NASCAR is di- or NASCAR is dying, and their road is still going really well. It's like just completely different. It's like switched basically. It's opposite. Yeah. So, I don't know. Um, yeah, I. <sighs> Yeah, I, I I think if they added a convention in America, I think it would be sick. I would definitely go to it. I still want to go this year, and also just an excuse to go to Germany. There's a lot of people I definitely want to meet. Um, yeah, longtime friend, of course, Bobbert, um, and and some other like Dutchies, like friends and stuff, and like Sven Haas. Um, I I'm sure he probably goes. I don't know if he does or not, but yeah, it's uh, a lot of people I just love to meet person because i have yet to meet a single iRacing person in real life Uh, like i i've never met anyone that i that i knew through iRacing in real life yet never has happened so i think changing that would be really really cool for the better Uh, anything else experience anything else about i guess daytona in general like the the ferris wheel you're i know you're they couldn't get me on the ferris wheel and the funny story behind that is because i have a fear of heights the first two years I went, the first year, my friends, Brian and Aaron, drug me up to like the third or fourth level. And I about had an anxiety attack. Really? And I don't deal with heights well. So they kind of knew that the second year, third year, when I uh, texted Checkers or Wreckers, I'm like, hey, where are you guys at? I know you guys are here. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're on level three, which is above me. I couldn't go up the steps. Wait, you're talking about the stands, right? Yep. Really? Yeah, That's I bad, have trouble with the steps. It's wow. because. When there's a pathway in between the uh, stands and the like inside normal walking area, uh-huh. there's an open gate that you can like look down and see how far you're <laughs> up. And it bugged me. It's scary, yeah. And until I actually got myself to do it the next day, because I'm like, I'm not meeting Malone because I can't go up the stands. Uh-huh. I'm not making them move because of my fear of heights. So it's one of those like, okay, if I want to make this happen, I need to get up there. And once I did, I started to get a lot more comfortable with it. That's good. That's really but, good. I saw like a YouTube. Uh, yeah, I was looking back on your YouTube channel. There was a YouTube video you did where you flew for the first time. Yeah, you were in a plane. God, that was. Uh, yeah, walk, yeah, that's an old. Well, how long ago was that? It was. It was over the summer. Over the summer, well, like uh, that was yeah, our local airport. My brother is a little bit tied in with them. Is friends with them because my brother does YouTube stuff. Uh, Tractor Head 04 on YouTube. Uh, shout out to my older brother. Uh there was a 1929, I think it was, Ford Trimotor, which was yeah, actually, sick. I forget what movie, but it was a uh, Matt Damon movie. That plane was actually in, like Matt Damon actually sat in that plane. It was that exact plane. It was that plane. It was used wow. in the movie. That's uh, awesome. It was like an Indiana Jones style plane to me. It looked like yeah, something was, you'd see in Indiana well, Jones. Well, everything from the 1920s looked like Indiana Jones because that's, <laughs> that's what they were making. Yeah. But, uh. Yeah, he can. We he kind of convinced me, but also it was like one of those like trying to tackle my fear type things. That's awesome. And we flew in it, and it was a good experience. I don't know if I'll do it again, but first couple minutes up in the air, I'm because my brother taps me on the shoulder, Are you okay? Uh-huh. And I'm shaking my head with a death grip on the seat. Were you like shaking <laughs> yes or no? Were you like, oh no, I was like, like, no, mm-hmm. I was like, no, I'm not really, I'm not okay. Yeah. But, planes out they're not going to magically make the plane stop because i have a fear of ice yeah i mean i think you'd be a little bit more down and kind of hit the point well well i'm up here i'm here till we either crash or land You're committed now at this point i'm committed now it was pretty cool to see my area because it it looks different from up in the sky Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah it looks like toys it it was a really cool experience yeah boy that's cool yeah i um is it just like when it comes to the fear of heights is it like the fear of just falling, basically? Yeah, okay. How I word it, I don't have a fear of heights. I have a fear of falling from heights. Okay. It's not the heights that bothers me. It's the fact that I'm going to fall and die. It's I kind got of you. where my problem starts. It's so, always so how like I skydiving is my... like a nightmare to you. That's like no, the worst. I'm not skydiving. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's, a million, that's a million me, subscribers. That's me natural YouTube selection goal. doing its job. Yeah, so skydiving is like the, no. the like epitome of something that you would never do, essentially. No. I'm not jumping out of a plane with a parachute. (laughs) Truth to hell. (laughs) No, I I understand. I mean, for me... me a few million dollars, I'll think about it, but... (laughs) 
for me it's like um i i don't really get a sk- i get like i feel like vertigo i don't know if you know yeah. much about that but whenever i stand in front of something that's really tall and like look up at it and i think it's fairly I, normal, I, i'm a little bit the same way like you look up and it's just a weird like you lose your balance yeah exactly you start to like that get way, dizzy a little bit like uh when i was sitting in the stands at daytona like if i looked way up or whatever i i get this uneasy like almost almost on like water like stuff's like kind of moving around on you a bit yeah it's like a little I, yeah i get that some yep yeah, a little bit. But for me, I have to be right. If I if, if it's obviously something in the distance, I'm fine, of course. But yeah. like, I have to be like looking like almost directly up to where I can't see the horizon anymore. Mm-hmm. Like with my peripherals, like it's all up at something. That's when I'm like, oh man, like I'm start to I feel like lose my balance. Um, but in terms of heights, I don't know. That was wait. That was your first time flying ever, right? Hmm really would you yep. uh, did, did you drive wait where, where are you uh what state do you live in pennsylvania pennsylvania okay do you think you would have i assume you drove to daytona well i mean it saved yeah, money my as friend well won't, my but, friend isn't fl- won't fly oh so you also have an, a friend who also is 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 he scared of, of heights or just flying in no general? he just doesn't like flying okay yeah, that's my uh the underbreak on twitter okay is the guy i drive down to uh daytona with Gotcha. Because we've talked about it. That would be the one time you could get me to fly because, my God, it's a 15-ish hour drive. Oh, it's, yeah. I would have flown the crap out of that. <laughs> it's like a two, like, yeah, I would have been from Pennsylvania to Daytona. That would have been like a two-hour flight probably, something yeah. like that. But So you've never been on a commercial airliner? Nope. Boy, I think, to be honest, if I'm being honest with you, the 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 plane you flew on... I think is way more dangerous than any oh, yeah. commercial airline. It's one of those. If that thing goes down, I'm dead. Yeah. There's no safety. It's I'm. A, oh no, I'm you're a you're giant gone. Pile of burning metal. I'm. Dead. Yeah. I mean, that was the one nice thing about it is I didn't have to worry. Like if this thing goes down, like yeah, I don't have to worry about living. <laughs> you don't have to have the scarring memory in your mind of you just free falling. You just yes. well, yeah. Yeah. It's it's one of those. I'm safe to say I'm dead. Yeah. No commercial flying. I, I feel like commercial flying, the way that the, the, the cabin is set up is... Oh, I, don't I know really, it's completely safe. Like, well, it's that as like, well. Yeah. But even the height thing... Yeah. I feel like you don't really realize... You don't notice it that high? No. That much? No, because you're more... Since it's bigger... Ah, the way to describe it, I don't know. It's like... Have you ever been on a cruise ship? Nope. Have you been on, you've been on a boat? Either nope. You've never been Not on really. a boat? Not really. Like a fishing boat or something? Well... Uh, Maybe a kayak when I was a kid or something. I don't know. Okay. Well, I don't know. I, I'm, a good analogy, I'm living but... a lot of stuff since I've graduated, since I've turned an adult. I had a pretty normal, well, not even normal. I don't know. It's one of those, I'm trying a lot of things now, like in my that's cool, mid though. 20s that I've never thought I would do. Before. Oh, that's really cool to kind of like go out of your comfort zone and stuff because that's how I feel like yeah. how a lot of people grow is, as, as yeah, people really it, is to do I've that seen stuff. A lot of, I've seen a lot in the last year really what are some other yeah. things that you've like um gotten over or not gotten over i guess but tried that you were scared of or something or oh or, flying was flying was one of them i could say i've been in a plane uh hmm. yeah flying some of it doing the vlog in daytona was a weirdly growing experience for me because it's one of those i'm very much like people in my family most of them don't know i stream they know i do sim racing but not to what extent uh like, it's one of those most people in my family have no idea to do content creation of any type. Uh-huh. So for me, blo- vlogging in public was a bit of a... Although I'm around a bunch of strangers that don't care. It No, I definitely... It was, to me, a weird growing itself. And there's just some other personal things. Yeah. Uh, oh, I understand. I've noticed in, like, over a year, like, my one friend in a video joked. I don't know if you heard, but my friend Aaron pulled up while we were showing off the clips of Porsche Pumper. He's like, oh yeah, you you brought like a third of hat because some of you guys don't know if you guys have watched my channel in the past. I've lost a bunch of weight, like That's I'm down awesome. eighty pounds from where I was in May. Uh, so that was another again personal change, like in the last yearish. Yeah, so it, it's weird. I'm a lot different than I was. Uh, That's awesome, though. To I, I'm proud of you for you know try uh, d- doing this sort of stuff. It took me to like my mid twenties you know? to finally get shit together, but. No, I mean, that's still, that's awesome, though. Like, it, it really is. Um, 
Yeah, something with vlogging. I'm kind of the same way. Like, it's not an issue in the sense of the issue for me is is other people seeing me yes. and thinking like, yes. what, "What's this idiot like it's doing?" It's something you want to do, but yeah, you're a bit not. You're kind of scared to show it, even though they probably don't care. They may think, "What is he doing?" Or he's just mm. always oh, vlogging or doing something stupid. But mm. it's that. It's opening yourself up to other people's. Not critique, but I was a little bit embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just one of those things. For me for me, like if I were to vlog in my house or something, I would be easy because it's just me. Yeah. And I'm yeah. not really Oh I, yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah. It's it's only though, yeah, when you go out in public and other people look at you talking to a camera. Exactly. And I know what you were saying, like, you'll never see those people again. They don't know who you are. You don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It's not going to actually affect you. But yet, it's one of those things that it's like, I guess maybe a self-conscious thing. That oh, yeah. It's like, oh yeah, that's exactly. I don't want to look like an idiot just like holding up like a selfie stick with a camera talking to myself. And I don't know. I mean, I've, I've, I've tried vlogging, you know, years ago uh, when I went to like gaming tournaments and stuff i was really big into this uh game dota 2 but like i don't know how some of these really big people like big pe like uh content creators do that like all the time or these irl streamers and stuff i think it's a bit of a comfort thing think of it this way i'm guessing when you first started streaming or doing youtube i don't know exactly where you which one you started first i'm guessing there was a bit of a shyness that came to that yeah and after time it was like a consciousness you can, always. You can fire up today and boom, it's normal. Yeah. No, oh, that's a good point. I think it's probably a bit of the same thing. Because even then, even at Daytona, even after a couple of days of trying it, I had trouble trying to get Malone on camera. And now there's a reason why you only see one shot. It's because I was too shy to break up the camera. Because I would love to get like Balkan and uh, uh, Linux on. Mm. But there's a reason why you only see one shot of the guys. Mm-hmm. And that's because I was still trying to get myself to actually try that, which I'm hoping helps me for Indy. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping Daytona helped me grow enough that I'm going to be able to do more of that stuff, in which case can grow for the next event, where I slowly get more comfortable just yeah, doing it. Yeah, just like slowly get used to it and realize there aren't, like if people, yeah, you get used to it and realize, hey, it's really not that bad. Like it, it, yeah. No, I, I, and that's I, why I brought up that. It's because for me, I was really shy when I started no, to hate I, That's TV, definitely a legitimate. Like years ago. It was cringy, but now I'm mm -hmm. way more comfortable with being on camera with some random people on the internet watching. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I think with vlogging, it's kind of weird because I feel like the more you try with vlogging, the, the worse it is to an extent. I think it's kind of the being yourself and unpredict, not unpredictability, but just the, the naturalness of not planning stuff makes the vlog good if you are I think too scripted some, yeah I, I think i'm never gonna be like a hardcore one but like vlogging events i think it's easy not like the daily stuff where you do have to plan stuff out oh and yeah some of that i could never do that stuff, stuff out early but i, I don't have my yeah, life is not exciting those. enough to be able yeah. to do this daily <laughs> like i i don't even yeah. these days i don't even leave my house so it's like i think like events and whatnot i'm kind of excited to try to keep doing it and trying to bring decent videos because not everyone's going to go to this stuff. People may never go to the Daytona 24. That's fine. If mm -hmm. maybe they like watching the racing off a of video, that's that's great. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to branch out, force myself to do different stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really really cool. A hundred percent agree. And yeah, the flying thing is great as well. Just it's cool. Yeah, I need to do that as well. I here's a mine. I mean, like I don't. I guess I'm the same. Okay, so I'm, I guess I'm kind of the same way of you. I have a fear of falling. Yeah. But I don't have a fear of height. Like, jumping out of a plane is something I, I won't do. Um, bungee jumping, of course, screw that. But, like, being on top of, say, like a tall building or whatever, I'm fine with. And I guess it's maybe because I, I know I'm safe, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I mean, I, I guess that that's why, cause, and also it probably is just a growing up thing. I, you know, I, when I grew up, like I was flying since I, well before I could even walk. And so like all I've known 
like i don't remember the first time i flew or yeah. i don't remember the first time i was on top of like maybe like uh the empire state building or something i don't know i mean it's not like i was traveling every day to some other like some building but you know it's like you did it enough to be comfortable with yeah and it was at a point in my life where i was so young that it's like i i could i I couldn't concept that like I could actually fall or something, you know, and so you just oh, like yeah, that's, that's my fr- that's my brain's first reaction. Like, well, I'd die. <laughs> it, it is like scary, especially looking. I think where was it? I don't know. I remember I was staying at a hotel once, and it was like a hotel that was a square, and each room had a balcony that overlooked, and then you could look down into like the yeah. central courtyard. Mm-hmm. And I mean, this hotel was pretty big. And I remember like looking over and the railing only went up like mid chest, maybe like stomach oh, yeah. to mid chest so that, that and like, flip over and die. yeah, like I was thinking like, as I was kind of looking off the edge, first off, that also made me dizzy. Not only oh, yeah, is looking up, but also looking directly down. Uh, but I also was thinking like when I was like looking over, like someone could have easily just like grabbed my ankles and pulled my legs up and whoop, like I'm, I'm gone. Yeah. And that, that scares, yeah. that scares me. The, the fear of Real falling life, is... Yeah. And even this is going to sound embarrassing, but um, up until I'd say only like four or five years ago, I was scared to even like jump into like pools and stuff like that even scared me. The, the fear of like even that and that's so small, or, like diving boards. Like, yeah, I could never do that because like that also that's probably high enough to make me a little nervous. Yeah, like I even but I mean, it went even as far as to just like the edge. I, I couldn't do it. I didn't like jumping into like a pool. And I'm over that now, um, but I just remember when I was younger, I couldn't do it, and it was an issue because I was on the swim team, and that was definitely an issue. I, <laughs> that was yeah, a, I could feel it being a bit of an issue. That was an issue, especially with those blocks. I remember we had like the drills where you where you, you know the swimming blocks or those boards, not the diving boards, but when before you start like a swim race, you stand on like these blocks and like okay, I, oh yeah, I know. You yeah. know what I'm talking? They're at the edge of the pool, like eight yeah. of them all lined up. Yeah, I remember going up there and. I felt like I was on top of like the yeah. world, you know, mm-hmm. it just, so that's definitely something that I used to be scared of. Uh, roller coasters. I still am. I hate roller coasters. To I've death. never ridden one. Yeah. I, I've ridden a few. Um, I just don't like one theme park though. Really? That's probably and a that good roller thing. Coaster is like a wooden one It's like one of the old, old school. Yeah. Those are actually uh, like legit scary for safety reasons. Well, what if it broke down the one you were there? Uh, the blue really? streak, Connie at Lake park. <laughs> the thing got stuck at the top of the one of the hills and people are having to walk down it. That is it was just one of the old school wooden, like OG type roller coasters. Like my God. Yeah, that is just insane. It roller coasters to me are yeah. I, I don't know. I don't like the feeling of like this your stomach like like you know that stomach when you are fall oh, oh yeah. You know, like when you go over yeah. a big jump or like even in your car, mm-hmm. when you go through a dip in the road or something and your mm-hmm. stomach like goes into your throat, basically, I yeah. don't like that feeling that much. And so I think that's mainly the reason why I don't like roller coasters. I'm glad I don't though, to an extent, because those costs like theme parks cost so much money to go in. Oh yeah. It's like, a, it's like 50 bucks for a day. Or it's just like, come on, mm-hmm. you know, give me a break. You wait in line for four hours to go on one ride. It's just not worth it. Not worth it at all. But yeah, that's cool though that um you're you're going out of your comfort zone to try stuff for sure. Yeah. And um I guess something we were going to talk about was um your music choices cuz I know yes. according to your your username online Metal Addict yes. it uh makes me wonder what type of music you like. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm talk just about it. I some Simon and Garfunkel before we hopped on. Yeah, so yeah, I wanted to bring this up because I'm not a metal fan, really. I, I I've I, noticed. Yeah, um, I, I'm not, not against people, it, but not it's a huge just of people are. Yeah, it's just one of those things I never really, um, I never personally really cared for. But I definitely think it is. I obviously respect everyone's. Uh, yeah, just I guess walk like. How did you start liking? Did you just grow up on it? So I grew up on a lot of the old classic stuff, like the. the because when I'm in the car, drive to my grandparents' house every weekend was like a 40, 50 minute drive. Uh-huh. So we only had one radio station we ever played, which played classic rock. So I grew up on stuff like Petty, Zeppelin, The Who, uh, just all of that stuff. So I had a, and when I was a kid, I got introduced to Kiss by my uncle because I went to his house 
on holiday time and he had the kiss masks which was like 97 98 and at the time i'm like five and that was like the coolest thing to me and the since mask. my uncle liked kiss like me and my brother fell in love with kiss so for me like kiss is like my all-time favorite band and because i found them as a kid and if you tell me there's gonna be a band that shoots fire and pyrotechnics and spits blood and levitating <laughs> drums and pirate it was the best like my god how could you not like this yeah it was like so and cool it just at the time. slowly evolved like over time my taste in music slowly got heavier and heavier like i remember liking stuff like motley Crue, which oddly enough i actually just watched the biopic the dirt today of that i saw that on twitter you posted that yeah uh, got another one planned for tonight, but I slowly started to like heavier and heavier music. Then, like around seventeen or eighteen, I really got into metal, like actual metal, not like Bon Jovi hair metal stuff. Like I was really sort digging evolved. into Judas Priest, Black Sabbath, Metallica, Slayer. I didn't find until I was like eighteen, and they're like another one of my all-time favorite bands. Uh -huh. So it's one of just over as I got older, my taste in music got older. Yeah. That's cool. So, because Kiss is, Kiss is more rock, correct? Yeah, they they had a couple of heavy albums. I mean, Creatures of the Night from '82 was pretty heavy for them. Huh. Uh, and stuff like Revenge in '92, I think that was when that came out was a heavier album for Kiss. But they had a couple stuff. Uh that was yeah. It it was really late, like the outer. Let's be honest, that all sucks. There's only like four of you guys who actually like that album. Uh, <laughs> what album? Uh, th music from the Elder. It was supposed to be made for a movie that never got produced. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. <laughs> uh, but it's one of those weird, like, cult fan favorites. And uh -huh. actually, fun fact, I met one of the offstage keyboard players from Kiss, who I've mentioned to you about getting yeah. on here. Gary Corbett. That's awesome. I'd love when to When I was on my old team, Keystone, he knew a couple of the guys through a league and they're like, Hey, there's a member from kiss in here. Gary Corbett, he played keyboards. I'm like, Holy shit. That's awesome. Like, he actually ended up sending me a few picks from a uh, hot in the shade tour and a signed thing, but he actually runs his own iRacing racing league on here. That is so cool. But so he's, he's an iRacer. racer racing. Let me meet a member of my favorite band. Just to think about that. The connections. It's crazy. Yeah, the connections one really day that you can, yeah, that's cool. So now what, um, I guess as, as, as time progressed, you said when you were like 18, 19, it was like Metallica and Black yeah. Sabbath and stuff. Slayer hit me. Yeah. Slayer absolutely hit me. Uh -huh. And some of it's because like at the time, every te angry teenage, you're just becoming a man type thing. Uh -huh. So I found Slayer and it was loud and aggressive and I liked it. Yeah. That's awesome. So, and it, what, it what are you into now? I guess uh, it's... I'm still into like loud and aggressive. Uh, for me, there's a a third and fourth. Like for me, there's there's I, I always have this list of bands that I will say changed my life hmm. at some point. I would say Kiss because it really got me into a little bit of the shock rock. I found out I like theatrical music, which will just bear with me. I'll tie in later. Uh, then stuff like Slayer is the next one I will say. Uh, really changed because that's when I really started to get more into the extreme type of music. Uh, King Diamond is one because he was one of the OG ones with like Venom that brought like the dark imagery, like satanic uh, imagery, which for me, I kind of like the stuff, mm -hmm. which if you can't tell by my channel theme and then <laughs> Ghost, who is a newer one that's been around for like 10 years now. They, their first album dropped in 2010. But they're like a mixture of Blue Oyster Cult and Merciful Fate, where they have the dark theme over light ish music. It's weird, but I've seen dark them four theme. times live. Wait, dark theme over light ish music. So by it's, theme, it's like of, their message? Yeah. Yeah. Dark, dark message over a light theme. Okay. So like dark, so dark message think of over. Don't fear the Reaper only with Satan. See, I don't even know. I'm so out of it, man. Oh like, God, dude, you're yeah, talking to someone I'll, who likes Queen. No, no that's fine. Like, that's, I mean, it, and that's it, that's fine. Queen's great. Fun fact: uh, Freddie Mercury died on the same day as Kiss's drummer. Really? What was yeah, that? Eric Carr. Ninety four. Uh, ninety. No, ninety two. I think twenty fourth, ninety one. Ninety one. That's right. Gee, 
Yeah, see, I... For me, I... Like, Queen, um, ACDC, I like... Oh, yeah, ACDC's... Okay. I feel like that's a classic. Question I, for you. Yeah. I need to flip this. Now we get to... Podcast I, I, leader I leader. don't know if... So, yeah. are you a Bond or Brian Johnson person? Um, I don't... I feel like I don't know enough to be able to say like oh, really? I, yeah because like i listen to their music but i don't really know you, do you I, know which I, one's which though can you hear like like no i really can't a lot of rose rosy and have a drink on me you wouldn't know which one's which i dude i'm no i'm okay. such a casual listener to it that okay. like i i the thing is for me when it comes to music I, I focus more on the song as opposed to the actual artist in the sense of if there's a song I like, I'll listen to it. But And I feel like this is bad on my part. But like if there's a song I like, I'll listen to it, but I won't actually think to listen to more music made by that same person. Oh, I that's where my... There, I'm, some, I'm somewhat that way. There's some bands I like one or two songs. Yeah. Like, the, it, it, and there's some bands that I get into and I get really into. And I start my OCD just kicks off like Kiss. Hmm. and stuff like where i'm i dig and stuff hmm. but i know acdc is like one of the few like really successful bands that have had two different singers because like, unfortunately bon scott died in 80 late 79 one of the two i think it was early 80 i think it was like february of 80 and then they got brian johnson and then put out like one of the best selling albums of all time yeah which one back in black back in black was the album first album with brian johnson that blew them up again because they were big before, but that album just, they took off. Okay, I think I know more because music. Bond was such a talent, but Brian Johnson, this, that stuff, like, is that, they, you have, yeah, you have stuff like that. Those About to Rock was a really good album. And even then, some of the later albums aren't that bad. Uh -huh. But they had quite a bit, like, Razor's Edge, as stuff like Thunderstruck and Shoot to Thrill and other What year was stuff. that album? Not Shoot to Thrill, uh, Back in Black was 80. Was 1980? I think it was 80. I think it was the same, later that same year. I feel like most of the ACDC music that I've listened to is, is post-80 then, I guess. Like, it's just, there's a lot of... Yeah, like, I, I don't... There's a lot of... You probably know a lot of it, the early stuff, because, like, Dirty Deeds, TNT, Highway to Hell, If You Want Blood... Okay, yeah, I've Rose. heard, I, I, I know those song, uh, some of those ball, songs. Which I laugh, I'm, I try to laugh every time. It's probably one of the most ACDC songs ever. Mm. Because the whole thing is talking about something else, not a actual ball. <laughs> but they, it's just the childish lyrics, it's the most ACDC song, song ever. Because every other song, it's about, about the same thing. Mm. But they cover it up better. So now, if you were to put on a scale of, like, I guess a rock slash metal scale of the lowest being, like, I don't know, just some sort of, like, jazz, basically, and then the most, like, what's, like, the most hardcore band? Uh, that's, that's hard, because there's different ways of, you can just go who plays, like, the heaviest riff, or who plays the fastest, because metal, some people say, oh, yeah, it's just people screaming over loud music. There's so many different genres of metal. Hmm. Like there's metal bands that go for pure speed. There's metal bands that just go for pure, just chunky riffs. <laughs> there's some bands that are like doom that are more slow, but heavy, hmm. but, uh, so, so it's you can say you a bunch of like death metal. It could be technically the heaviest, but also like one of the first metal riffs ever written to me is still like the heaviest riff in Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone has written a heavier riff and that was like the first quote unquote metal riff ever written. Yeah. So it's hard to, it's hard to put on, I guess like a Yeah. There's scale, like some of the like most we're... popular, but you can judge some like, sure. If you put Bon Jovi versus Cannibal Corpse, yeah, Cannibal Corpse is going to be on <laughs> the heavier scale of metal. Yeah. Would you even but put Bon Jovi as metal? They're... Some people say no. They're in the hair metal, I think. I don't, what's, what's, whole, what is, I don't even know what that is. The whole MTV thing, like you think of like Bon Jovi, Rat, uh, Enough's Enough, 
Oh, Christ. Not Queens, right? Because they're more progressive. Anything you would see on MTV was the big hair and the girls. Motley Crue was somewhat that way, but they were one of the more popular. Yeah, okay. I know what you mean. Uh, yeah, the big, Cinderella. like, poofy, like, crazy hair. Uh, there's another, uh, Girl School. Not, not Girl School. They made a song called Girl School. Uh, Brittany Fox. That's who I'm thinking of. Uh-huh. The stuff like that. Twisted Sister. Although they had, they were more than just, they had a couple big MTV hits. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah, Def Leppard. I can kind of go on that, but they're also, they have more than just like hair metal stuff. But the whole MTV craze, for to be successful, you had to be on MTV. And you had okay. to have a pop song, which oddly enough, Great White, another hair metal band, uh, Warrant. Sorry, I'm, this is where I'm going off on a tangent. I'm sorry, but you kind of opened the box. Uh, <laughs> the Pandora's box. That's good. Pretty much. You got me. White Snake. Oh, that's probably one of the worst, too. And I love David Coverdale, too. I like, like man, uh, you give me burn from deep purple. That's great. Cave, David Coverdale. Is this love? Yeah. I, I only know, I don't know anything from white snake except for the one song that everyone knows. Um, here I go again. And is this love? Yeah. Here I go again. I like that song a yeah. lot, but like, just cause I like that song. Like, I don't know they any of their other music. One. That's really good. Uh, I'm sure I've listened to, to more of them, but there's a bunch of stuff. And I think if I had more time, I'd play you. I'm like, oh yeah, I've heard that before. Poison. Pro- God, never mind. That was again one of the worst. As far as like being completely stuck in the hair metal. Yeah. So that that's what they what that's what uh Bon Jovi was 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 kind the, of yeah the hair metal. Gotcha. And then. I know a lot of people say that like metal is like just screaming and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, which, there's so many different genres. Yeah, there's so many genres. But, but That's now like me it, trying to talk about like rap and R and B. I could I'm I could say everything's like boats and hoes when it comes to rap. <laughs> I know there's different genres and parts of that, but it's just I'm not gonna invest myself into it. Yeah. Same reason they say metal is just screaming and Satan worshiping. That's only part of it. That's like it's like a just a subgenre within the kind of yeah. So like subgenre scre- subgenre. So like screamo though is like a yeah, subgenre. It's kind of, of screamo has its own stuff. But there are screamo bands and are you in, are, do you like core. screamo? Not especially. Okay. Yeah, there's stuff that I can play that's hard to listen to for most people, like some black metal. Uh-huh. There is stuff I enjoy, like uh, Immortal. Uh huh. And stuff like uh, Dark Funeral. Uh-huh. But there's black metal stuff like that that most people would find really stupid to listen to that I somewhat enjoy. Yeah. I yeah, I've never I don't know if it's just cuz I never really grew up. It was like a taste that it, I it wasn't really an acquired taste to me, I guess. You know, like no one yeah, in my it, family, it, no it relatives, I think no the friends music you listen even. To as a as a young person shapes what you like. Yeah. Like I got fed classic rock. Mm-hmm. That was it. I'm okay with that. I thank my dad for that. Mm-hmm. But it helped shape what I'm listening to now. Yeah. No, that's cool. Definitely. For me, I don't know. Like, thinking about what I... For me, like, music was never really... Like, my my parents don't listen to much music, I just realized. Because like, growing up, I don't really... I don't really know. I mean, once I got like, there were really popular songs I remember, but like were like cringy popular that like everyone listened to at the time that I remember listening to. Like, um, I can't even like, <laughs> like, uh, oh, what is it? Superman or whatever. It was like the oh, song. Yeah. It's like the night three doors down. It was really stupid, but or like other like fireflies and stuff. I remember I was in I think like sixth I grade. That song. Yeah, they're cringe yeah. now. But like at the time I just remember like those were the songs. Or um Well yeah, but anyways, but like I don't really remember there wasn't much of an, a music influence, I guess, in my household. So I guess yeah. I don't really know how I got like my taste in music are actually very diverse. Except for, I guess, when it does come to metal, like metal yeah. is metal and country to me are kind of the two that I I I can't stand much country. I find it a bunch of whiny crap. Yeah, same here. It's and it feels like the same message every single song. It's about you know like some guy who's either a trying to get this girl or about like some girl who like wants a good guy or just you know it's the same thing. Just everyone ha- everyone has a tractor 
drives yeah, a truck. Everyone has a tractor, drives a truck, wears blue jeans. Yeah. You know, like it's it's lives all, in a small town. Yep. <laughs> lives in a small town. How many millionaires can write songs about living in a small town and driving a tractor? Yeah, exactly. And you think, I mean, right. they're millionaires. Like at this point, they should be living in the big cities, right? They're millionaires. Yeah. They're not the small towns anymore. So it, I don't know. It, it yeah, I could never get in a country really at all. Um, because I know there was like, yeah, like I, I can listen to old country though. That's like, what a lot of people say. Old, because it was different. But yeah, it was like sick even back that, then. It's kind of. I, I mean, I'm not much of a. I, I can listen to old country more, rock, but though, I don't like. Like I'm not much of a Beatles person. Yeah, like I liked the White Album, but most Beatles, I'm like, I understand their influence. Without the Beatles, there's no Kiss. Without no Kiss, there may not be like Motley Crue, because who knows if Tommy Lee ever picks up drums after seeing Peter Chris. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a weird chain of events that I have to say like, yes, the Beatles were hugely important to set off a chain of events that most of my bands I like came from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. I can kind of see that. That's kind of how it was, I guess, for me. Like, I never really listened to much 80s, and then I listened to Queen, and I really liked Queen. And I, I mean, because there's a lot of Queen songs that, like, everyone, like, it's used all the time. Oh, yeah. You know, like, the basics. Freddie like, was, like, one, is like, one of the top frontmen who ever lived. Yeah, definitely. But from Far that, in. like, I started to listen to more 80s songs and more and more, and I really like 80s music. But it's less of artists that i like from the 80s and more of just straight up songs which i think yeah. i really need to change because i think there's a lot of songs that are buried within artists oh, that yeah. there's, there's stuff are you'll, golden you'll gems that dig up and wonder how you didn't come across this exactly and i really need to start doing that because like that's something i need to do in modern music i i don't really listen to much like really mo- in high school i listened to a lot of modern music uh even like the cringeworthy stuff like i was listening to a lot of that stuff in high school and i think a lot of it for me was just to fit in like so yeah. i could understand like references that others would say or like i would know like names of artists or or song names and stuff but now um a lot of the stuff i listen to like if i were to go onto my my spotify right now like i have um i like the weekend avici i really like avici um uh, I, I wish he was still around because he made really good music to me, in my opinion. Um, Mac DeMarco, he makes... Uh, it's hard to describe what type of music he makes, but it's really cool. Synthwave, I like Synthwave as well. I've been playing that a lot on stream lately. Um, but yeah, it's... It, What's your thoughts on some like eighty really cheesy 80s techno... Like, not techno, but synthy type. So I, I may have something for you. I used to think it was cringy, um, but I used to think it was cringy, I guess. Like, for instance, okay, like a good example, like Top Gun. I remember watching that movie yeah. and I thought that the soundtrack was cringy at the time. And this was when I was maybe like eight or nine. So this was like the early mid 2000s. Yeah. 2000s. But now I listen to those in the car all the time and I don't know where it, it switched from it being cringy to it, me liking it. I've got something for you then. Yeah. I send it my way because I night I mean, flight orchestra, night flight orchestra. I'll have to yes. write that down. It's former metal people, but it's one of the weirdest synthy, but it's amazing. I absolutely love it. The night flight uh, orchestra. I have them pulled mm-hmm. up right now, so I'll take a look at them. Definitely. But they sound like they come straight from the eighties. Really, mm-hmm. yeah, I really like that the videos music. too. It's it's yeah, that music is really cool to me. I just like the the. I I can't put a finger like I can I can visually hear it in my head what I like about it, but I can't mm-hmm. tell you what I like about yeah. it. You know, it's one of those those things that I just can't put a finger on. But yeah, music like I. Since I said I grew up not really late, not really listening to any music, because my parents never really did, but now if I'm like, I feel like I always have to be listening to something. Either I'm watching mm-hmm. a YouTube video, I'm racing, or if I'm not doing that, I'm listening to something on Spotify. Yeah. I can't just be doing that. Like, I can't just. I'm about the same way. Yeah. And I just think to myself when I was younger, like, how did I ever like live when I did, wasn't listening to something all the time? It's probably a bad thing. I mean, you know, it probably is good to have some times where you're not having stuff blast in your ear, but it's just 
it's one of those things i guess that yeah i don't know but no it's cool though seeing how your music taste kind of evolved as you grew up yeah and i remember we were talking i don't know if it was on twitter or on discord about the toothbrush the kiss toothbrush we both had the same i one. had one of those yeah i had i got one of those for my birthday years ago oh yeah it was years ago, ago. it was probably mid 2000s is when i had, I had the cologne in high school too i didn't have that i it had was, that I, I didn't have the cologne i just had the toothbrush and i remember um the only kiss song i ever or the the kiss song that was on the toothbrush was um rock and roll a night yeah like isn't that their most famous song yeah i mean or most well known anyways yeah. i just remember that was a song yeah, it was like a blue toothbrush, white handle, blue like yep. Yep. thing up to the brush, whatever you call that. Yeah, and whenever you'd press your, it against like your tooth, yeah, it would it'd start, start playing. playing. Yep. yep, we had the exact same thing then. Um, yeah, really, yeah, really cool uh, for sure. But that's cool, man. Um, any other, I guess, cool or like interesting things or eye racing things? Oh yeah, I guess the Mercedes AMG. I guess getting back on topic with iRacing. Yeah, getting back on iRacing. So you got me on music. Yeah, we that's cool, though. Music. I mean, that's Man, what we this on. podcast is all about. Yeah. Uh, it, I warned you. I'll go on tangents. So. No, I. it's awesome. You know, it's cool talking about stuff. Like, when it comes to music, I am definitely not the most educated in music, regardless of what genre. Even if it's stuff I yeah. like, I'm still... I can tell you, like, what song I like. I can't tell you... Um, like oh like did you like when so and so artist like posted so and so it's like dude I don't know like yeah. I either n know the song there's songs I I like that I don't even know who made it and it's kind of messed up probably because I'm thinking like if someone was like I really like that podcast but I don't know who made it you know yeah. it's like well you know they, they deserve probably some credit but there's certain songs that I just yeah um I just don't really follow the artist too well but yeah um, I racing you're you do oval, you do road. When you do road, you do Mercedes. For the most part, yeah. I and, tried GTE Ferrari. cars, but I'm I'm horrible in them. What GT? So I'm one of those. Uh, I've tried about all of them. Really? Honestly. Do you own all of them? Uh, the service. Yes. Was there any that you liked more than others, less than others? Uh, the Ferrari is probably the closest I have. I did try the BMW because everyone says like, yeah, it drives like the Merc, and even then, it's still I'm way off pace in it. It's about the closest thing to a Merc you'll have. But Yeah. I think the BMW actually is I don't want to say difficult, but I definitely think the Ferrari is the easiest GTE. Yeah. The, it, it's probably one of the easier ones. Definitely. Yeah. I, I think so as well. Is the brake you can it drives so smooth and you can brake really hard yeah. with it. And it doesn't get unstable under braking. It it's just all around a really good car. But the the BMW lately has just been like the car choice and that seems like every single and who would have thought i racing starts getting more partnerships with bmw i that's what i was saying with matt malone, uh, was it malone put, planted that conspiracy theory uh, what, that what uh, who would yeah i think it was on the last podcast malone no, I, I i i was saying theory. that i think that they bumped the numbers of the bop because of they the could've. bmw's partnership it, it wouldn't shock me if they did something to make sure the bmw was pretty competitive yeah well, yeah, dude, even the Z4 at Bathurst, like, I mean, I guess the Z4 was pretty the competitive Z4 is always, last year. It used year. to be the OP car, yeah. but there are some stuff that it's, there's tracks that's good at just because of what the car is. Yeah. And there's other tracks, like, you'll never see a Z4 at all. No, like, I think... So people can't complain too much when there's, like, one track it's actually decent at. No, definitely not. And I think that this year, especially at Bathurst, was, we saw a pretty, at least in my split, I saw a pretty good variety of cars. I think I, the only thing I didn't see was a Z4 in my split. I didn't see yeah. a McLaren. Oh, that too, but I didn't expect anyone in split like 19 Quirk. to think about the yeah, Quirk, McLaren. Quirk was, was crazy enough to... <laughs> oh no, the top splits, yeah. The McLaren's fast, but it's hard to be fast. Yeah. You didn't see a single Z4? No. Oh, I saw tons of them. It was, yeah, we... Uh, I didn't see many Audis. I didn't see many Audis. I didn't see many Ferraris. Yeah, we had a few beach, mostly Mercs, but... Yeah, it was the mostly field was dead after. Not yeah, there's a lot I didn't really even see. How many? We started from the pits, was. so like we didn't even. There was death. I mean, we went on the first lap. I went from 55th to like 43rd I, without even yeah. seeing a car. <laughs> it's like, well, these guys died in towed. I don't even know what class they. They could have been a, a McLaren in yeah. there. Who would? You know, I never would have would have known. But the BOP did really nothing. Um, 
I don't really think. I don't know. Oh, out. Oh, well, that was top split, but uh, Audi won top split. Did they? Mm-hmm. I see. I haven't watched. Yeah, the, it was the uh, broadcast back. I didn't even know. He wanted to team. say Venval, but it's not. It's their purple, white, and orange team. Uh, Kawanda. Yes, Kawanda. Kawanda won. Yeah, okay. they, they won. Or top Kawanda. Split, but, I don't know what. How I don't know how to pronounce it. Pronounce it. Yeah, yeah, they won top split in Audi. So. Yeah, I'm not surprised. That's that was Rogers and Josh Rogers and Oh, I can't remember the other two. I don't think Dion was racing that one. But yeah, um I thought the Audi was going to be way better than it was though. Going into the race, I thought we'd see a lot more Audis. And looking back, I'm not I don't regret taking the Audi, but I don't know. I don't regret it because I, I don't think it was the car that killed us. I think it was us who killed us. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. I think it was skill uh, at the end. When so. it's bath versus yeah, it's it, usually an input mistake. Yeah, it usually leads to death over the car screwing up. The car itself. I mean, the, the car itself is. Yeah, like I used to love it. The Audi. When that and the Merc came out, I bought the Audi. Really. Like yeah, because I think I won my first race in it. I think it was a C brand. The Audi is so much fun, man. That was before the first. That was in the first BOP. Like that was when the cars were released. So was it OP when it was released? I don't know. Probably. I was like a fifteen hundred I rating driver. <laughs> I won by like not wrecking and driving on track. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, and then what? When did you like commit full time Merc? You were like, oh, I'm just gonna it, drive this. I've always been about. Ba- I've always been a driver of car I'm the fastest in. Yeah, and then I started I just driving more and more Merc, and like, ah, I kind of like the feel of it. Huh. And I think a lot of it was one of the fir- the next year for the Daytona Twenty Four when the huh. Merc and Audi were both in it. The team drove the Merc, so okay. Yeah, and then after that, so, it's just one of those. It, I just like the car. I for some reason it drives the way I think it should, so my inputs match what the car needs. Oh, Not, I I know what you mean. It's one of those weird like I, I can't drive the mean. Merc like I can drive the Audi. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Like, there's certain cars. I find it very difficult going from GT3 to GTE. Like, if I, yeah. I remember I did a. Gosh, what was it? I don't know. I think it was either the 24 hours of. I think it was 24 hours of Spa. And the next day, I did like a GTE race at Road America. And like, I know what you mean by the car feels like. Or you. Th- the way you think the car will handle is how it does because yeah. I remember hopping it's a weird into the brain G- click. Yeah, because when I hopped into the GTE, I it, I couldn't. It's really weird because I've driven GTEs before, but I couldn't. My mind, I couldn't tell my mind that like I can go as fast as like I can go, f- at, like even quicker through these corners because of the downforce. Yeah. I just couldn't like tell my my mind just wouldn't click that like listen you can go around this corner at X amount of speed and you'll be fine. Cause I was so used to the GT three yeah. and I feel like the GT three, I mean, I think it is partly fact as well. It is more kind of of a stock car. I think GT three actually has more arrow added than GTE though. Well, no, I don't think that's the case. I don't know. No, we're getting some really fancy I, stuff. I, I, I don't know. Man. For. Yeah. I, I don't know. But I, all I know though is the GT threes, I feel like do feel like how like more of a stock, like a yeah, stock maybe AMG, coming from a NASCAR, a like I'm Audi. used to cars that don't handle quite great, takes a bit to slow down, kind of heavy. Yeah, no, I can definitely the see GTEs, that. GTEs, they feel like a light like car. Nimble. Oh, yeah. yeah. You do not feel the weight in the GTEs yeah. at all. Yeah, I mean, that's why I pick so much on the AMG, because it doesn't feel light. It feels like you're driving a boat. And I think that's why people, a lot, a lot of people don't like it, is for the reason that you do yeah. like it. That makes sense because it is a oh, heavier yeah. car. Like I agree, hundred percent. The AMG it feels heavy, but yeah, but it's 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 still really quick and does what you want it to. I know when most people do the twenty four of Daytona, like if they're an oval driver, it seems like they always will pick the AMG. Well, that's some of that just because the AM the Mercedes and the Audi, and I don't know why they didn't include the Ferrari. Well, it's because because the Ferrari probably would have been the top choice think for for oval drivers i think it's top speed oh yeah top speed oh at daytona yeah yeah that's why most people chose the merc because it has a top speed 
uh, advantage. Definitely. Oh the yeah, a bit the Audi the infield, is, but ter- dude, the Audi is so bad yeah. in straight line. It's not. It's a joke. I like, think if you were to throw the Ferrari in there, both would have been most close. Jump to the Ferrari, or it, it would have been closer. Been yeah, yeah, it probably would have split more. Definitely. I really want iRacing to make it so that we can pick more than just two or more than seven. You know you, how they can only have seven different cars in a race. Yeah. Like, ah, oh man, I just wish, like, if I'm signing up for IMSA, I would love to pick any GT3 to go into IMSA, not just Well, the that's Audi. also because what's in the end IMSA, I think, as well. Well, in, in actual, oh, yeah, actually. Oh, uh, no, know. never mind. That's wrong. In, well, in IMSA, they have the BMW, and it's not the Z4. It's the M6. Yeah, but, I mean, I don't know. Like, yeah. I, I feel like it wouldn't be, dude, I mean, they still have an LMP2 from, like, you know, like, 2000. 11 oh yeah the uh, hpd hpd so like i feel like they could i don't know i just think it would be cool if you could pick any gt3 and imsa or like um yeah i think or at least they had cool. the ferrari yeah because they used to have the i remember i started the playing still when they in had the ferrari. yeah i i remember i i when i started playing it was the the three gtes it was porsche ford uh ferrari and then GT3 was Ferrari and Mercedes, I think. I don't think Audi was in there, was it? Yeah, I think it is. The American Audi have always been. Okay. They dropped those cars at the same time. Oh, really? Same patch? Mm-hmm. Oh, yep. so they're just as old. They announced them both. Maybe not at the same time, but they got released at the same time. Okay, gotcha. Well, yeah, I just remember there was Ferrari and IMSA. And then as soon as the Beamer came out, it was it? Yeah, as soon as the Beamer came out, they kicked the Ferrari out. I think it was what it was, or maybe it was even a patch earlier. Yeah, but I'm not. I can't remember. I don't know. I, I can't. I wish remember. they had it back. Yeah, because I think the Ferrari GT3 is a really good car. Um, it, it used to be trash, but I think mainly because of the Ferrari fix, those setups and Ferrari fix. That's the just, first time I really learned Bathurst. Really, the Ferrari fix. Yeah, oh yeah. I spent a week trying to farm that. Yeah. It, Ferrari, the Ferrari was good around. Is good around there, I think. It was. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Um, yeah, I kind of miss Ferrari fixed. I thought it was kind of a fun series. I think the setups were absolute trash, though. But I don't know. I guess the BMW, the series they replaced, was I think better. I guess overall. if it helps us get more GT4 cars, then go for it. Oh, dude, hundred percent. Like I'm really looking. Are you gonna get the Cayman when it comes out? I'm not sure. Well, okay, I want to get the Cayman when it comes out, but I'm not sure. Like, I have to buy the BMW and can and compare them, but yeah, I'll I don't know what which GT4 one I'm, I'm fastest in. Yeah, I'm excited for GT4s. Me too. I really want that to be a good series, like a popular series. You know, add something else because right now in road, it's like you have IMSA, ILMS, VRS. Those are the big three. We need a D class, multi class series. Yeah, I think that would be cool. Besides PCC, which who normally gives a crap? <laughs> well, Not Matt, Matt likes it with the. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Mustang, I know what you mean. They need to. We I, need like an active D class, and that's a good stepping point for IMSA and whatnot. Or. No, yeah. IMSA's B class, isn't it? No, oh, IMSA's C. Or is it C? Okay, so yeah, we need a D class hmm. with TCR and GT4. Okay, there you go. Here's your intro- introduction to multi class racing. Like proper multi class. Because, yeah the, yeah, the Mustang and the Mazda, that's not, that's just, that's kind of crappy multi class. That's just throwing it's, two cars together. Yeah, it's that just kind of thrown together. I think, I think that, um, that would be really cool. I want them to keep the, the BMW fix though, because I really like the 12 minute races. I've never really tried them. Really? I, it's just yep. fun. It's, it's like a good time killer. Like just, I'm sure if they get a walk in or something, I'll do it. Yeah, it's... I don't know. It's pretty cool, but... I think what we're going to do now, if you're down, go to uh, some questions that were posted uh, that people were redeemed. We'll go through some of these. I think some people um, posted more than once. We're just going to go through these, all right? So we got right. the first question from Aurorus126 who asked, who has inspired you to race? So I guess who, how did you get into racing, I guess maybe? Or? So I'm, I'm going to assume it's iRacing. Yeah, yeah, surely. So I got a long time buddy I've known online, uh, Brady Tenen. I talked back and forth a little bit 
not so much in the past few years, but uh, showed me a thing called iRacing <laughs> years ago before I even got it. Probably about a year in advance. Uh, was showing me him running street stocks at USA, and I still remember it. He had his webcam pointed at his laptop, voice chatting like this, showing me sim racing. And Not that's even how screen I heard sharing. Of it. That was probably before, like. Well, that was back before internet was really that good. Yeah. And for stuff like that. Uh -huh. So he showed me that, and I started looking up on YouTube, started watching Rutgers Kevin Empty Box, and I did that for like six months before I actually built a computer and bought a G27 Elon pedal set. Because I knew at the time I wanted to do content creation. Like, I was thinking way back there, like, I wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be like Empty Box from Rutgers Kev. Mm -hmm. So, watching their videos and just seeing this sim and a serious racing game uh, was huge. Yeah. For me being a NASCAR fan, I think like, this is awesome. Like, oh, this, that's awesome. This is great. So, yeah. So it was my, kind of my friend Brady Tennant streaming iRacing from a webcam off his screen on Skype it was my first ever experience with iRacing. Well, shout out to him because I mean, yeah, I feel like what, with iRacing, it's like the first time you play it, it's like love at first sight. You just you're in. Yeah, it's just it's so sick, so sick. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, great question, Aurorus. Um, Amsel asks, um, ask him if he thinks Painkiller is the best metal song of all time because I personally think it is. It's one of them. It is a great song. It's like Halford. And that was such a change for them because that was when they got Scott Travis on drums and the band changed because he was way different than any drummer they had before. Uh, but it is one of like Rob Halford's like shining songs and he can still do it. I saw Priest live a few years ago and he can still do it. I'm so excited for them writing new music. Awesome. I won't say it's the best, but it's one of them. One of the best. Uh, good question, Amsel. Bobbert asks... Um, okay. What is your favorite band? Okay. So all time favorite. I'm going to go with kiss with a slight edge over ghost. They are ghost to someone that you're either. I love them or you hate them. Give them a shot. They are like a life changing band for me and they are amazing. An amazing live. They're playing one show this year and recording an album for next year. But I've seen them four times and have been great every single time. Awesome. Yeah, I think music, there's, if there's a band or just a song that can actually literally shape your life, you know it definitely is impactful. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that, that's awesome. Uh, Charlie Collins asks, how is Jack so fast? Okay. Yeah, you asked that last week. God bless you, Charlie. Uh, <laughs> Bobbert asks again, Oval or Road? Okay, so... My first couple years on the servers, I would have said Oval. The last few, I've been doing way more road than Oval. But this year, I'm trying to split. I've got, I want to become a 4K operating driver on Oval. I want to hit 3K on road. I kind of got goals for both. With NIS coming back, I want to be trying to do some more Oval. Okay. Uh, and a couple leagues I'm doing. Awesome. One of them's V8 Supercar. The other one's doing... V8? Like, do, uh, yeah, uh, Court. I'm trying to do some of their stuff, which has both mixture of road and Oval, so... Trying yeah, to keep it awesome. pretty uh 50-50. Yeah, that's good. That, that's awesome. Um Hover again with another question says, You planning on coming over to Europe for race events? Uh if I get big enough and get a lot of money. Sure. If you can drive somehow, across the ocean. Yeah, if I could drive across the ocean. No, if <laughs> I somehow got big enough, I got a sponsor. Like what Malone got. She has to go over to Germany for the fanatic. Yep, yep, yep. Sure. I'm never I'm not gonna say no, but we all know that's probably not going to happen. I mean, hey, you can't. I mean, the future is the future. You know, yeah. just keep up the work, and that stuff could could come knocking. Yeah, at but your realistically, door. it's like that happens to very, very few people in their lives. Yeah, that are very lucky and very talented and work very hard. I mean, I think, I think, I think it can. I think you can get there for sure. Aurora's asks, "What do you hate most about iRacing?" Or he just says uh, about racing, but I think he means iRacing. So one thing I hate most about iRacing is a the people come in here and don't take it overly seriously mm -hmm. i think it's just another game it's kind of ruining it for everyone else yep and some of it is on iRacing's part itself is the slight inconsistencies like we just had the whole shenanigans with the porsche 
Pro Cup. Oh, and a bunch of people yeah. getting banned the for bands. tire warming. And the fact we don't have a road pro series. She says Porsche. What happened to F1? What happened while just... with Blanc Pond dropping out? Like, it seems like, hey, Oval just signed Coke. That's amazing for the pro, road pro, Oval Pro series. Mm, that's huge. What about road? Because yeah. that F1 series is a, was a stable, huge stable back in the day for iRacing. Like, I'm wondering what's going on there. Why are we not pushing for more of a road pro series? I, I'm thinking maybe there's two things I look at. Maybe A, the GT4 maybe could introduce. I, some, why would they make that the pro series, though? Yeah. I could see going from F1 to GT3 with a Blanc Pond sponsorship. That made sense. And then doing the whole GT3 only. We have an IMSA partnership. We have a WEC partnership, I believe. Like, give us a proper multi-class. It probably could happen more in AMSA before WEC because, well, I guess we have enough cars in each. But, like, give us a proper multi-class series. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be great. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Maybe, I could see them maybe doing a pro series with the BMW because of they had that who, BMW 120. Who knows? I don't I know. Could, who knows what's in the road? Maybe something like that. Yeah, I, I have no idea. Um, Karen asks, what changes would you make to increase oval participation or interest in general? I think oval's already pretty popular. Uh, I agree. I, I think... What changes would I make? It may be like how to convince road guys to try oval or something. I don't know. Uh, only thing I can say is I don't know time-wise. Try to make it. Try to see if we can line stuff up perfectly, where you can try to do more races back to back. Because there's times it sucks where you finish a race, and then you may have to wait an hour, hour and a half to do the next race you were looking to do. Oh, that's awful. Like one of those, <laughs> maybe look at times and see if we can figure out a more ergonomic way to get stuff back to back, where you can kind of keep going. Mm hmm. No, I, 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 I get, I for sure agree, especially as content creators like ourselves, it sucks like getting yeah. out of a race just to know that they're, especially if you rock out early, it's like, oh, oh boy, what am I going to do for the next hour while I wait for the race? It's awful. It's, it's awful. Um, Aurorus, I guess. Okay. So he said, um, general racing as well. He had, when he asked the question, what do you hate most about racing? He meant as well, just general racing. So I guess he said about I racing, maybe now more just general I guess racing. What's stuff that you don't uh, like about racing? Money. For two reasons. One, it's it's more becoming some you have to have money, even in noble stuff. Two, it's more about sponsorships than anything. If you have a sponsor, less talented people will get further than more talented people. Mm -hmm. Just for the fact that they have the backing. And mm -hmm. if you don't have any backing, you really don't have any line. Even though you may be the most talented person, unless you're like a generation talent, like the next top person, mm -hmm. most people, you have to have some sort of backing to move up the ranks. Yeah. And you'll see that in Cup, where some guys won't get a ride because they don't have a sponsor. It's, and it's becoming yeah. more about money. I sound like a boomer. Back in my day, <laughs> you saw NASCAR, people in NASCAR ran one sponsor all year. Now, as you have like 10 main sponsors. Yeah. It, it's it's all, way it's more all like money. About money. It, it's less about the passion of racing and just more about money now. Yeah, I a hundred percent. People with agree. a sponsor will get a ride over more talented people without a sponsor. And the people and who, if you don't have sponsors, your car's gonna suck because you don't have money to actually put into the program and compete with the higher ranking. Like it's just, it's yeah, I agree. It's it, less about driver talent and more about are you with an underfunded team or are you with a team with an unlimited budget. Yeah, no, I 100% I agree. It's like the stories that everyone likes to hear, though, the people who, who go from like rags to riches, they come from oh, nothing yeah. and They're then great. they make it to the top because they have the most passion. But I feel like now you're you have people who it's like you make it in if either your father or like mother was successful. I, I don't want to throw a blanket statement. You still have to work hard. And still oh, have definitely. To have but there's just times that sponsorship is going to be the, the reason why you boost. Yeah, why you sometimes make it or break it. It's because you just never had the funding to get yourself there. Hmm. Yeah, it's... 
Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. That would definitely be my answer as well. Good question, Aurorus. Um, all right. I think that that is it for questions. Um, is there any, I guess, maybe closing statements, thoughts, whatever, questions back, questions to the viewers, anything like that before we wrap it up? Uh, I really don't have much. I think I've... You said it I all. Wasted enough of, yeah, I think I, I've, it wasn't a waste, man. It was. It was it, I, I really appreciate this. it. This is my first podcast. Yeah, and I was well, nervous going into it. I'm like, oh boy. I'm no, really it's awkward. it's awesome. You know, it's just and a chill a conversation. Minutes, yeah, you know? that's that's Another really thing, all it I'm is. Forcing myself into a different situation where I'm oh, not under great. my own blanket of my own channel where I can kind of control things. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'm proud of you for that. 100. percent Um, thank you for coming out to uh. To just hang out, talk, talk about sim racing, music, flying, heights. Yeah. Just, I guess. I think we covered everything. Like, yeah. Wait, what didn't we talk about? The eight, well, yeah, we, yeah, really. I mean, it, it was a really, really good, good discussion. Well, I want to thank you for having me on. Like, I know you started off with Malone, which is a great first one, but to have someone like me that I'm Dude, still, I'm back, to, I'm back to being the small fish in the big pool again. And it's, it's been weird watching you come out of nowhere. It's been kind of refreshing. Yeah, like in the last I, year in the Twitch community, to kind of, for lack of better terms, come out of nowhere. Yeah, and I, grow yourself like you have. It's been awesome to watch. I appreciate it, man. Because there's people who grind for years, and yours. It's a lot about personality. Yeah, which I think is one of your strong traits, and why you're so successful. Yeah, it was. So I, I appreciate you kind of well, doing something like this, giving me a shot to talk about my story. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. It for me, I guess. Like, I think a lot of people have said that that I've come out of nowhere, and a lot of it was. I mean, in our community, like the I race, yeah, yeah, no, content I, community. Yeah, I know you have other stuff that you grinded. The whole no, Twitch for grind, sure. Other places. No, for but. sure. But yeah, when it comes to I racing, yeah, like it was. I definitely can see how people just because it, it was, you know. I mean, there were people when I. I remember when I first started streaming iRacing within the first, I mean, this was really like when I very first started, there were people like not many, but co some coming in saying I was like view bonding or something like, cause I just came out of yeah, cause nowhere. People come up from the like, search street seeing them. Like I still remember my first YouTube channel. I still uh -huh. remember the few people that we all had tiny YouTube channels like five years ago. Yeah. And we're all growing like Tommy Versetti, Richard Tam. There's a guy named Bacon Lord. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Rancer980. Mm -hmm. I still remember those guys and are friends with those guys because we all kind of started, we found each other through our own tiny YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. So we kind of, you, you, we're more used to seeing the growth from inside, but to have someone outside step into iRacing and have success, it was kind of cool to watch. It's like, man, who's this guy? Yeah, it was. And you kind of like made yourself at home here. Well, that's really cool to hear that. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate it. And you guys have welcomed me since the beginning. Like it, I mean, of course there's a few like bad fish in the pond, I guess you could say, but the, the overall like 99% of the people I've met in the iRacing community have been just so awesome and so welcoming and just really supportive. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like the way that I came in, I, you know, you remember when Giant Waffle that whole thing when he was doing iRacing. Do you, do you remember him? I, I think I, I recognize the name. Well, he, there was about like maybe a month or two last year where he did iRacing almost every day and he's a huge streamer, 800,000. Th okay, I think I remember that. Yeah, he had like a thousand, like, no, he had like, like 8,000 view viewers a stream in iRacing. Yeah. He was always number one. And I kind of, I mean, I kind of view myself the same way as he, like I started to try it and then I just stuck with it. He didn't stick to it, but it was like yeah. kind of like that, but on obviously like a 20 times less scale, you know, because yeah. I don't have like 8,000 viewers, but it, it, it was just one of those things. And so, um, but yeah, it's really, I, you guys have been just so welcoming and um, I, I love it. I love hanging out with different people or you know, and, and uh, hopefully plan to meet kind of like what you did at the 24. Yeah. I want to do that as well. You know, meet a lot. I'd love to meet you in person next year, maybe at the 24. Yeah. Um, if you come down, that's, yeah. that's the coolest thing is meeting people. I met a couple of people that knew me from years on Twitch mm -hmm. and whatnot. I got to meet a couple of those fans. 
I was like, holy crap, like these people have been that's so cool following my small stuff for for years. Like they were bringing up videos I did years ago. That's awesome. Like man, like it was one of those really cool moments. But yeah, that is yeah, awesome. He's from Daytona. Oh yeah. yeah well I, I appreciate it. It's nice to know I'm, I'll throw my camera in your face as I'm well, cool. you're dude, you're more than I may welcome be more to, comfortable man. by then. Yeah, you'll have Indy under your you'll have Daytona under your belt, you'll have Indy under your belt. Yeah. Maybe I need to do all this else. prepping to get on camera with Jack. <laughs> yeah, practice it so then I need to seem professional. Exactly. No, but yeah, I, I appreciate it, man. Uh thanks for you know, the kind words and thanks for coming on. Um I yeah, it really means a lot. Uh, it was great talking with you. Uh, I think this is this was our first time, besides just like either through chat or through like Twitter DMs or something where oh, we yeah, actually talked. I'm pretty talked. sure this. Is, yeah, this. So normally it's Twitch and me making sarcastic remarks. Yeah. Not doing metal. It, that's yeah. That's uh, the, a lot of people yeah. uh, seem to make fun of me for that, which I totally get because I'm so yeah, oblivious to that sort of stuff. And I'm okay with that. No, I, I respect everyone's um, taste, no matter what, you know, uh, it just, yeah, isn't really for me, but thank you uh, once again uh, to everybody watching and listening. Thank you. If you're watching this on YouTube or watching this on Twitch, I want to say thank you guys. I do appreciate it. And if you are listening to this on SoundCloud or Spotify, thank you so much for listening. And I think that's going to be it. I hope everybody has a fantastic morning, day, evening, night, whatever it may be. And uh, we'll see you guys next week for the third episode of Beyond the Pit Wall. We'll see all of you guys then. Any last words, Eric? Uh, listen to Slayer, kids. <laughs> Alrighty. We'll see you next week, guys.